The story begins as we see a band of red ogres attacking a town. The people cower in fear, and as the monsters approach, a dragon can be seen flying overhead. A man on the dragon's back chants, and hundreds of paper talismans descend onto the ogres. A talisman stops in front of each ogre, and there is a devastating chain of explosions that destroys even a part of the town. One of the ogres survive, but it gets eaten by the dragon with a single bite. We learn that this is the world's strongest exorcist, who sought to be the greatest, but his search for power led the imperial court to fear him, and in the end, they betrayed him, even sending his favorite disciple to oppose him. In his final moments, he wishes he was more cunning, casting a secret reincarnation spell and swearing to do things better in his next life. We then meet a boy named Seika in the middle of a magic circle. His father performs a ritual to examine his power, but none of the elemental stones light up, meaning he has no magical power and his brother Gly mocks him for being an embarrassment. We learn that he was reborn into a new world, where magic is completely different from his past spiritual arts. Despite not having any mana, he senses great spiritual energy from his body. We see Seika as he gathers some leaves. Paper is too expensive, so he creates Shikigami from the leaves instead. The leaves transform, with some turning into mice, and the others into crows. His brother Gly suddenly approaches, asking what he is up to. His brother looks down at him, threatening to hit him, but Seika's crows defend him. Their older brother, Luft, rushes over and chases off the crows. Noticing that Seika is unarmed, he is a little suspicious, but takes Gly to get treated. We see that Seika is learning about his new world on his own. He is the son of a mistress, which gives him lower status, so he is generally ignored at home. We see him working hard, as he makes his own paper, and is finally able to make his paper talisman. He gets a knock at the door, and we meet a young maid named Etha, who returns his coat, which his brother had thrown out. Gly saunters in to taunt them, telling Etha to get back to work, and bragging that he'll be going to the Imperial Magic Academy. As he is bragging, their father shows up, saying they need to get back to their training. Before they leave, Seika asks to join them. We see Luft as he casts his spell, creating a wind blade, and blasting through a large stone. Gly also shows off his magic, shooting a fireball at the target. Gly is proud of himself, and dares Seika to give it a try, believing that Seika has no power. Seika reluctantly takes the wand. On one hand, he doesn't want to reveal his power too soon, but on the other hand, he decides that a show of force might deter his brother from continuing to harass him. Using his spiritual arts, he fires a blue fireball, which completely destroys the target. The family is stunned at his power, and the fact he cast his spell without an incantation. Gly tries to take credit, saying it was his leftover power in the wand, but their father acknowledges Seika's abilities for the first time. Seika asks if he can also study magic, but his father refuses, saying it would be pointless, because there has never been a person born without magic that has become successful. However, he does give Seika a tutor, which gives him access to books, and Seika spends all his time trying to learn more about magic, even spying on his brother's lessons to keep up. As the years pass, Seika finally finishes his talisman. We learn that in his past, he would defeat demons and capture them, sealing them in another dimension to call upon later. He believes that even in this world, he would be able to summon his servants. As a test, he attempts to call on his most well-behaved demon. A door appears, and a young girl emerges. Seika doesn't quite recognize her, but the girl jumps on him, overjoyed to be reunited with him. The girl is introduced as Yuki, and she suggests that her appearance is different because his spiritual energy is lower than in the past. Seika is glad this was a success, and Yuki wonders how she can help him. Seika tells her it was just a test, and that she can't be seen by anyone else. Yuki transforms into a tiny wolf, saying she is sick of the other dimension, and insists on staying with him. The next day, we see Gly as he yells at Etha for spilling water on him. But his tone changes, and he suggests that she can find a way to make it up to him. Seika comes to her rescue, saying he has business with Etha. His brother gets annoyed with him, trying to punch him, 
but Seika easily stops him and his brother storms away. Hitha thanks him and ends up leading him outside, showing him an injured bunny. She wonders if they could save it and Seika tells her to turn away so he can focus. He takes a hair from the creature and using his talisman, he successfully heals it. Hitha praises his talents and Seika can see that she is also special. Hitha gets nervous, but Seika can tell that she can see the spirits of animals. Hearing that he can also see the spirits, Hitha reveals she can actually see the elemental spirits. But she finds it strange that those spirits seem to actively avoid him. He asks Hitha if she can command these spirits, and she remembers one time when the wind spirits were taking her laundry, but she yelled at them, and they seemed to go away. Having studied this ability in his past, Seika can see Etha's potential and offers to teach her about magic. Etha says she doesn't have the mana to use magic, but Seika tries to teach her by summoning a soul flame and telling her to banish it. She tries asking it nicely and has no luck, but she eventually loses her temper, insisting it disappear, and the flame vanishes. Although she is weak, Seika can see she will be a great ally in the future. They become friends and secretly train together from time to time. They continue to train over the next year, throughout all the seasons. On Seika's 12th birthday, there is no celebration as usual, and his father isn't even around. He tries not to let it bother him, and surprisingly his brothers approach him with wooden swords. Gly, as usual, reminds him of his unworthiness, and tells him his only option in life is to join the army. Luff clarifies, and says that they want to help him learn how to fight with a sword. Suddenly, the maids warn them that a monster is headed toward the house and their father is away. Seika can sense that it's coming, as we see in the forest, the head of a giant elder newt emerging. Dial runs off terrified, and Luff tells everyone to find safety, but Seika heads outside, and we see that the beast is locked onto Aoife. Seika rushes to help, but as the monster attacks, it gets repelled by a flame. Seika is impressed Aoife managed to command the flame, and he proceeds to lure the beast away from the house. It lunges at him, as everyone looks on in terror, but using his spiritual arts, he shoots a poison blast into its face. The beast falls, rendered completely disabled by the poison, and Seika prepares to tame it. Everyone is amazed at the feat, defeating the elder newt with a single attack, and they applaud his victory. He turns and waves, glad that his family finally seems to appreciate him, and he hopes that this will be the start of the life he had dreamed of. He has a feast thrown for him for the first time, and his father congratulates him on his accomplishment, saying that even veteran adventurers would have found the beast challenging to face. His father offers to reward him, so Seika asks him to allow him to study magic at the Royal Academy. His father thinks to how he always diligently studied magic on his own, and agrees with the request. However, his father warns him that even though they are nobles, he will still need to pass the entrance exam on his own merits. Seika goes on to request for Aoife to attend the academy as well as his attendant, wanting to keep her unique ability around. Aoife panics hearing this, but his father tells him it would be pointless because Aoife has no magic. So Seika decides to show off their training. He hands Aoife his wand, instructing her to command as many spirit flames as she can and pretend to cast flame note. She commands the flames, and follows his instruction, shooting an impressive blast. Gly is shocked she could use intermediate magic, and their father accepts Aoife going as well. Gly objects to his father's decision, saying it would be breaking tradition to send two brothers on the same path to the academy. His father agrees with this, and tells him he will be joining the Imperial Army instead, because he had always played with his sword instead of improving his magic over the years. Gly can't accept this, and challenges Seika to a duel, to see who gets to go to the academy. Their mother tries to stop them, but Seika accepts the duel, and their father decides their duel will take place in the morning. Back in his room, Yuki appears, commenting on the drama. There is a knock at the door, and he gets a visit from Luft. His brother wishes him a late birthday, and even gives him a gift. Because he always studied diligently, the gift is a glass pen. His brother goes on to apologize for being distant to him, but is glad he turned out into a fine young man. He asks him to take it easy on Gly during their duel and wishes him luck at the academy. Later that night, Seika's window gets blown open and Gly demands for their duel. He couldn't wait for the morning 
and didn't want to follow their father's rules. He says that Sega just got lucky that a monster appeared, and he lucked into defeating it. Gly attacks with his flame note, engulfing Sega in flames, showing he can also use intermediate magic, but it has no effect on him. Gly follows up with his wind lance, but it's stopped by a barrier. Seika takes out a paper talisman, and Gly continues to attack to no avail. Seika commands Gly not to move, and he becomes completely frozen. Seika scrunches the talisman's arm, causing Gly to feel the same pain. Gly is confused about his powers, and is ultimately forced to concede. He passes out, and Yuki wonders if it was wise to let him see his power and live, but Seika says he promised Luft he would go easy. Seika thinks back to Gly calling him lucky, but it turns out this was all a part of his plan. We see that six months earlier, Seika summoned a gigantic cyclops named Nudo. Despite its appearance, it is glad to be able to serve him once again, and Yuki boasts that she was the first one that was summoned. Having researched the monsters in the area, Seika tasked the cyclops to drive the elder Newt out of the mountain. As he goes to pick up his brother, Yuki wonders why he doesn't show off his true powers, calling the people of this world weak. But he reminds her that it was the schemes of the weak that ended up getting him killed in his previous life, so he will not make the same mistake again. Sometime after, Seika and Ifa prepare to leave for the academy. Luff passes on their father's words, telling Seika to study hard, and Ifa to take care of him. The two leave, and along the way, Seika gives Ifa a necklace. She is overjoyed to receive it, and he tells her that they are mana stones which will help her draw in the elemental spirits. They are excited about their new adventure, but Seika starts to feel sick, getting struck with motion sickness, having trouble with carriages even in his past life. He starts to feel better, as they approach the Academy City, a fortress dedicated to pursuing magical excellence. Back at their home, his father sees that Seika should be arriving at the Academy soon. He thinks back to 12 years ago, when Seika first arrived. A woman showed up at his door, and disappeared after handing over her child. We learn that Seika is actually the son of his brother Gilbert, who became an adventurer after graduating from the Academy, but they lost contact when his brother entered the Infernal Lands. Seika's black hair and eyes are rare in this country, and he started using magic when he was only one, causing Luff to distance himself from him and Gly to become hostile. After finding out he has no mana, he has always known that there was something strange about Seika. Knowing there is something within him that could either let him become a hero or become a lord of evil, he feels bad for sending Gly to the army, but he felt it would be too risky to send Seika there. Instead, he decided to send Seika to the academy, in hopes it would be a better place to nurture him. Seika and Aoife arrive, and they get to their room. Aoife is surprised he actually has a weakness. Seika tells her that her room is next door, and she seems disappointed suggesting that she should stay with him for the night, since he is her master now. Seika misinterprets this as staying for dinner, and says he has lost his appetite from the ride. Although disappointed, Aoife leaves to find him some food. Yuki bursts out annoyed, saying he has no clue about girls, and points out that Aoife is in love with him, even using her position as his slave to her advantage, and Seika is left in disbelief. Later, the two explore the city, but Seika senses a strange energy. They continue on to register for the entrance exam, and when Seika reveals he is from a noble family, everyone around takes notice. Aoife introduces herself as his slave, surprising the others. There is a magic tool that measures mana, and Aoife is shown to have an affinity with wind and fire. When it's Seika's turn, nothing happens, and the woman is confused. Seika reveals he has no mana, and the woman tells him he can still register. The other students start to gossip, saying he will get in because of his family. Aoife gets mad hearing this, accidentally leaking her flames. The gossip stops, as a girl confidently walks past. Seika notices something about her, and she introduces herself as Amu. As she places her hand on the device, it radiates with a blinding white light, meaning she has a strong affinity with all four elements. Everyone is amazed seeing this, and Seika calls to her. He thanks her for stopping the gossip, but she says she wasn't trying to help him, saying that she is actually annoyed by him, thinking he can get in without any magic, and says he would just get in her way. 